So we're talking about sticky situations. A sticky situation, you might say, is rocking the comedy world. Um, explosive interviews on social media posts have a lot of people watching. It started back in January when Cat Williams went on Shannon Sharp's podcast. It's called Club Shay Shay. I think you already know about what I'm talking about because it's now been seen millions and millions of times. Um, Cat Williams, a friend of the show, expressed his thoughts on a number of things and it set off a firestorm. His interview went viral, so much so Saturday Night Live spoofed it in a sketch recently. <laughs> Monique then followed Cat Williams with her own Shannon Sharp interview where she spoke about past issues that she had with multiple celebrities, including our first guest, D.L. Hughley. True to who D.L. Hughley is, he went on his social media to talk about that and express himself in one of those what would you do moments. Well, this is a larger conversation, I feel, though, about what's happening with America's favorite comedians. And is this a reflection of something else in our society? It begs the question, what would you do if someone came after you publicly? Well, D.L. is answering that question today and how he's moving past it and focused on his radio show as well. Please welcome D.L. Hughley to the show! <laughs> Well, listen, I feel like you're giving me a fashion yeah, religious yeah, figure here. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're giving me a fashion absolutely. religious figure. Absolutely. Um, anything for you. Anything, anything you bring your fashion sure. realness sure. to us. Sure. I have to tell you, um, anything for me, uh, we talk a lot. I think uh -huh. you are one of the greatest minds. I told our team, one of the greatest, not just comedic minds, but just a thoughtful person. And I know you, and I've known you for years, you've been a guest on this show. You're very deliberate and intentional sure. about what you do. The decision of the show is called What Would You Do? Right. You decided to respond um, to the interview or the, right. well, fairness to Shannon Sharp, he says that his show is a conversation. And in this conversation uh, he had with Monique, sure. uh, she talked about a laundry right. list of things, things that she's brought up in the past, sure. um, including uh, a back and forth she's had with you that I think that started some time ago. Nevertheless, you decided that on your social media, and you can go to DL's social media because some of it I cannot play on daytime right. TV. And, and Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you play it well, on I daytime think, TV? Because I like to keep my job. Ah. <laughs> so, but you, you, you thought long and hard about responding. So the question is, why? Because some, some days you, ain't, you, don't want, you don't feel like taking it. Like, people can assault your, your character on a daily basis, and sometimes you're, like, you're tired of it. I think that there are times that you let stuff go, and there are times that you don't. Okay. Ultimately, if you assault who I am or my family, I got a lot to say about it. And I'm not really afraid. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, um, I don't. <laughs> At a certain point, I'm tired of it. You get tired of it. And that's always a challenge. I know people often say, you know, Michelle Obama says, when, we, when they go low, we go high. And I said, does nah, she really Now, when you really go low, I'm coming that? with you. <laughs> I know that social media has played a big role in this going viral. I mean, millions and millions of people sure. have seen all of these interviews. What's happening here? It's America. It is. Like, like I, I, it's not specific to any, any genre. Industry, right. Like, uh, Super Bowl, they ran commercials about Jesus, and four days later, they were shooting each other up at the parade. So that's... We, we, this is America, so I don't, I don't want to make, uh, uh, relegate it to any demographic. We're a very violent, narcissistic society, and to, to put the onus on anybody else. Like, you're watching the commercial, and, and Jesus came on right behind Timu, and I'm like, wow, I wanted to get saved, but now I want a car charger. I don't know what that is. <laughs> we are a society. I've watched political fi figures attack each other, uh, uh, policemen attack each other, so to, I think that's it's the society we find ourselves in, and I think... Uh, it's very unfortunate, but um, it is obviously the way we communicate with each other. How much do you think the social media plays a role in people's desire to, in that what would you do moment, right? Now we all have our phones and you can sure. instantly reply and you don't have to be famous. I know people right. who've gotten into it with relatives on Facebook. I'm like, you couldn't have called them? Right. You know, um, what is it about society and social media that, that perhaps is a fuel to this fire of anger? expedient. Mm. I think you're relegated to uh, very few characters. Uh, I think that you have the ability to say something you want immediately. Uh, you can say something, like it used to be you had to call somebody or make a, you know, to, to come on the show. Now you can say something dumb at the click, the click of your fingers. But I think ultimately people have a lot to say yeah. and we don't necessarily know how to talk to each other. Wow. But, but, but in terms of, of, of me, I'm very deliberate about what I say. Yeah. I meant everything I said. And I would say it again, I don't have a problem expressing myself 
Uh, I have to do it for a living. Dave Chappelle commented on all of this as well, and he, he said, Kat is one of the best painters in the game, so why are you drawing ugly pictures of us? And he meant that regarding black comedians, and some people agreed, others did not. I, I think you have a right to express yourself. Sure. You are one of the most... The reason why your radio show is one of the best and long-running radio shows is because you do speak from this truth place. Truth is so subjective. Is like, it? It's what people want to hear. How is but, that possible? Is there only one truth? No. no? Not, well, no, we have, we have nuanced truth. We have truths that we decide... But don't, those are opinions. But they, they, they are, in our society, the truths. Because everybody can say whatever they want, and I'm speaking my truth. And, and like, it doesn't belong to anybody, but now we've nuanced it to the point that I can look at the same situation you do, and we can have decidedly different viewpoints. But the reason those interviews are successful is because people want to see it. At a certain point, people are satiated by messiness. They are. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen. Like, you, 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 you strike lightning with one, and then you replicate it again. Ultimately, I like to do my job and, 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 and be cordial to everybody, but if you step out of line, I'm here to say what I gotta say. That's, that's pretty well, much it, and I think everybody can. When we come back, DL is not going anywhere. We're talking about his hugely successful radio show, why he believes it stood the test of time, and what is DL Hughley like as a grandfather? <laughs> We're gonna find out after the break. <laughs> Kings of Comedy, D.L. Hughley. Your radio show's been on how long now? Uh, 11 years. 11 years. I was a co-host yeah. once on your show. Yeah. Um, what do you think it is about that somehow connection that radio still... With all of these other mediums that we have, radio still sticks with us. It's the, it's the most intimate medium. Is it? Like, you got invited into your home. Mm. Like, you got invited into your car. Like, I think television and radio are intimate because it's not like the movies or a play where you go see a thing. It's, I, I have it on in my home. I, I, it's in my car. It's in my. Uh, it's close proximity to me. So I think it's it's a very intimate medium. But I, it's, and we paint pictures. I, th I think before, um, radio is like reading a book. Yeah. You know, you well, make your own characters, see. your own decisions. Yeah. So I think that's why, and I think that that's something that people always have has have kind of been intrigued by. I was looking back at all these pictures of you, and I said, look at that little kid at the bottom yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you are. People say the legendary D.L. Hughley. Right. Yeah. What does that feel like for you? It I mean, feel like had... my back hurt. That's <laughs> <laughs> to be a legend, all you got to do is wake up a bunch. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> Literally, all you have to do is wake up a bunch instead. And also have a primetime show. Also create kings of comedy. Also have books sold. No. Ready? I mean, come on. I, uh... I literally love what I do, and I think to be interesting to people, you got to be interested in them. Mm. I really dig. I, I think I, I love interacting with people. I think that I, I love being on stage. I love writing books, so it, it's not it's not hard to me. Yeah. So like I literally take no days off, and not because I'm. I'm when you was know, your last vacation? When I flew here on the plane and I fell asleep. <laughs> like I, I, I'm, I'm like, and, and to me, like it's just not that exciting to me to lay around and So wait. you've never... What's the longest vacation you've taken? The last vacation I took was when my family made me take one, so I guess... Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember? No. Does that make you a workaholic? No. I'm a lot of holics, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no. What? I just... I just... I think that people who don't love what they do as much as I do don't necessarily understand it. And I because think... I love my job, but I will love a vacation yeah. to Jamaica. Does I that know. mean... Yeah. I think, yeah, my, my, my wife and family, they, they love it too, but I just, it, to me, it's just, uh, I, I, I literally love what I do, and I love wow. being in space. Like, I love almost every aspect of what I do, except actually having to go. Like, <laughs> if I could just appear, yeah. like, you didn't have to get on a plane, traffic, all that stuff. I, I, like some Star I love what Trek, I do, just I love the people in. I work with. You're a grandfather now. Sure. You have your second granddaughter, yes. Stevie. Right. <laughs> um, you showed... Nola, on, they're on your social media right. to see this side of you right. and know that you are still working as hard and touring and you don't take... Grandkids are supposed to soften you up. Right. Like, make you want to stay at home they, and what, not go to work. What they have made me do is make want the world to be better and oh. different than it is. Like, to me. Like, I feel... when I, I never apologize for jokes, but I do feel differently now being a grandfather and seeing my, my granddaughters. And I feel uh, a sense of responsibility to paint a different picture. Because I think, you, you, just a sum total of your life's experiences, mm -hmm. I never knew that I could love children that weren't mine. Mm 
You know what I mean? This much. Wow. And, and so now when I think about uh, the things I got to do, like, I, I, I want to put them in a position where it's better for them. And not just from a financial place, but where the world looks different. Like, I was the first one of my mother's children who was born with the full rights of an American citizen. You know, uh, civil rights had passed in uh, Roe Ro versus Wade in the 70s. My granddaughter, Steve, was born in uh, September in Atlanta, Georgia. And she was born, yeah. <laughs> and she was born with fewer rights than me. Now, that's untenable to me. Like, we live, we, we live in a world where it used to be illegal to learn about, for slaves to learn. Now it's illegal to learn about slaves. Yeah. Like, so to me, the world looks different, and I want them to have the full experiences, but I want them to understand what has happened and, and the role we play in it and the role they'll play in it. So I want the world to be a lot better now, but, but my, gran, my, my granddaughter, Nola, is a COVID baby, so she scares me. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right. My son is that. They're, yeah. He was nine months old, and yeah, it's I'm like, like they're, ah. they're kind of different kids, right? Nah. But your daughter, Ryan, posted on Instagram that that you guys had an early tumultuous relationship sure. until Nola was born, and they've seen this different side. So I know that you want them, we all want our children to live in a better world. Right. But we also want them to know us as humans. So aside from all the accolades, all of the, the pointed and poignant things you say politically, what do you want them to know about? That they I call you human. him, right? Yes. They, they call your My granddaughter's called me. They don't call you granddad, they no. call you him. Why no. do they call you him? Because I want them to sound ignorant when they talk about me at school. <laughs> I want them to go, him said. I want <laughs> him I said. want them. Because, because, because I think that my daughter and, uh, like, I have three children, so my youngest daughter and I have always been very close. Uh, my son and I, we, we all have different relationships. But I think because my daughter knew me as a human is why we had a problem. I think it is difficult for your children to know exactly who you are and to reconcile. Like, they, they my daughter's, for a long time, they would say, I want somebody who's just like you and somebody who's nothing like you. Wow. So I, I never have felt bad about them knowing exactly who I am. Mm -hmm. I think that it is hard for children to know things about you that they, 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 they dispel the myths that they always tell about their parents. Like, mm -hmm. I, they know exactly who I am. And the more they knew about me for a while before they became adults, it was harder for them. Yeah. And so now I'm at a place now, my children know exactly what I did and what I didn't do. Wow. Like, they can say, he did that or he didn't do that. And I think that is an adjustment for that. But That's but a blessing. It is. The, that is a the blessing. relationship I have with my daughters now. Yeah. I talk to them every single day. Um, and, and I never thought I'd be that kind. I talk to them every day about all kinds of things. Now, one of my daughters I got to spend a lot of money on. Like, she going to want something. <laughs> so I know. And the other one, but I would never trade where I am uh, and the dynamic that we've been through. And I think for, for, for daughters, um, the journey was a little bit different than it was for me. I've always respected her and admired her. Um, I think she had to come to a place where she could expect, yeah, respect some of the things I've done and some of the things I've said. Um, but I wouldn't trade it for anything.